Alrighty guys, today I'm going to be teaching you something a little bit different. We're currently in my office and I'm going to be doing a video editing tutorial. We're going to learn how to open a 10-bit 422 file from a Sony a7S III or even a Panasonic GH5 in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. I'm currently shooting on the Sony a7S III and I cannot open the video files in DaVinci Resolve. Let me show you exactly what I mean. We have DaVinci Resolve open, the free version of course, and I'm going to show you guys what happens when I try to import a file from my Sony a7S III. So I have this file called file one. We're just going to put it in the bin and I'm just going to drag it onto my timeline. And as you guys can see, the video doesn't appear. When I first saw this, I thought I just forgot to record the video. I thought I only recorded audio and I got a little scared. Then when I saw the file size, which was about 10 gigabytes, I was a little confused. I'm like, there's no way this is a 10 gigabyte audio file because that would be insane. So the next thing I did was download and install Catalyst Browse and then open the same video file there. And let me show you exactly what happened. So when I dragged the video onto Catalyst Browse, it opens up nicely, it opens up fine. So at this point, I did what any sane person would do and I asked Dr. Google, hey Dr. Google, why can't I open a 10 bit 422 video file in the free version of DaVinci Resolve? After cycling through a bunch of threads, I found my answer, or what I think my answer is. Apparently some people were saying that some codecs are not free and DaVinci Resolve has to pay for them, so they can't include in their free version. I don't know if I believe that, but either way, regardless of whatever their reason is, we can't open it in the free version. So what we need to do is actually convert it to a codec that can open in the free version. So at this point, I googled which codecs were supported in the free version of DaVinci Resolve, and I found out that ProRes is one of those codecs, and you can have a 10-bit 422 image there. So now my question is, how do we convert this AVC long codec to a ProRes codec? So I started Googling, and then I found this tool that I have used in the past called FFmpeg. Now this tool is a command line tool, so for some of you guys who aren't developers, this can be a little daunting, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you guys step by step what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is actually download FFmpeg, so let's get on it. So in Google, just type in FFmpeg, click on this link, click on download, then look for the Windows button. Now we're just gonna find one of the built files. We don't need to build it ourselves, that's gonna be a little bit more work and not necessarily part of this tutorial. So once we find a file that we want, I'm just gonna download this one because it had the shortest name and I'm like, eh, why not? Once FFmpeg is done downloading, we need to move it into a directory we'll remember. And that's gonna be a little bit important later on. So let's open it up, unzip it, and we're gonna copy this directory. I'm gonna copy to my C drive, you can copy to whichever directory you want. All right, now that FFmpeg is done downloading, we're gonna copy this, which is the contents of our zip file, and we're gonna move it to somewhere we can remember. I'm gonna choose the C drive just because that seems the most memorable to me, and we're just gonna paste it. I'm gonna rename this folder because it has a really long name right now and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna call it FFmpeg, something simple like that. Now we're gonna open it up, and we're gonna make note of the bin directory. So at this point, we know where FFmpeg is, but our computer does not. And this is because our computer doesn't really keep track of where everything is. We need to tell it where everything is. So we need to copy the path of this executable called FFmpeg. So all we're gonna do is copy the path and then we're gonna open up the environment variables. So you can do this by typing the Windows key and then environment variables. And then we're gonna open up path. I already have it, but I'm gonna replace it with the same directory we just copied. And then click okay, that's it. Now to test that we did everything correctly, we're gonna hit the Windows key and type in CMD, and that's gonna bring us a command prompt. And all we're gonna do here is type in FFmpeg. If everything works, you guys should get something like this. If you did not install it properly, this is the message you guys will see. So we're gonna type in a made-up program, FFmpeg1 in this case, and it'll say that it cannot find the command. Boom, so we have the first part done. We've installed FFmpeg. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. We need to convert our AVC long codec to a ProRes KS codec. So we're gonna use FFmpeg and I'm gonna show you guys what command we're gonna use. All right, so the command's actually pretty simple. We're gonna type in FFmpeg, which is the name of the program we wanna call, and the computer can now find it because we added it to our environment variable. Then we're gonna go dash i, and this is gonna be for the input file. So in our case, it's file1.mp4. Then the next thing we need to do is tell it what video codec we wanna to convert to. So we're gonna go dash c colon v. So that means codec of video, and we're gonna say prores underscore ks. The reason why we chose ProRes KS is because in their documentation, even FFmpeg have said it's the best codec. You guys can use ProRes if you wanna save a little bit of time, but again, we wanna use the best codec. All right, so next we need to specify the profile we wanna use. So we're gonna do dash profile colon V. That means we wanna choose this video profile. And we're gonna write three. Now let me explain to you what this is. So the profiles are for ProRes specifically, 
and negative one is auto. So that means it'll automatically choose one. I'm gonna use three because that is 10 bit 422. The higher the number, the better the image quality. But since I'm recording a 10 bit 422 image, I don't need to go higher than 422. So that's good enough for me. I'll put a link in the description below for the different profiles. And that way you guys can choose one appropriate to your video. And the last thing we have to do is specify our audio codec. So we're gonna write dash C colon A, then we're gonna specify PCM underscore S16 LE. Now you guys don't need to know what this means. Essentially, this is a signed 16-bit audio codec. That's all you guys need to know. Then the last thing we need to do is specify our output file name. So I'm gonna call this file1.mov. And then all we do is hit enter and bada beam bada boom, FFmpeg is converting our video file. Now this does take a little bit of time, so we're just gonna let it do its thing and come back later. All right, so now let's address the big elephant in the room. Do I have to run this command for every video file I record? Short answer, yes. Long answer, we can actually make it a little bit easier. We're gonna write a small batch script, which is a program that'll run in the command line, and that's gonna do all the conversion for us. We're gonna set it so that way it'll convert every video file in the current directory. So what that means is once you're done recording, just put all your video files in one directory, copy this batch script over, double click, go get a cup of coffee, maybe a donut, go watch a movie, come back, boom, all your files are recorded. We're gonna make life that easy. So let's get started on this batch script. Now, I already wrote this code out, so I'm gonna copy and paste it in the description below. So you guys can feel free to copy and paste it and save it and you guys can be good to go. I'm gonna explain it for those of you guys who are curious to make sure that this isn't important. We're gonna go super high level because I know a lot of you guys aren't programmers, but I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. We're gonna ignore the first line for now. Don't worry, it's not a virus. We're gonna use it later, but it'll make more sense when we bring it up later. So let's look at the third and fourth line. So right now, all we're doing is we're just saying we want a directory called converted. We're just saving the name. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna check if that name converted does not exist in the current location. So if that directory does not exist in the current location, let's make the directory and we're just gonna call it converted. Super simple, all right? So all this means is if in the same location as the script, there is no directory called converted, let's make it. So if there's a directory called converted, we're not gonna make it, but if there's no directory called converted, we're gonna make it. Now, why are we doing this? Well, once we convert all the video files, we wanna make it nice and clean and we wanna know where our video files are converted. We don't want them to be jumbled in with our non-converted video files, just to keep it clean. You can literally get rid of this line, the program will still convert all your video files. So the whole point of this is to keep it clean and that way we know all our converted files are in the converted folder. Super simple. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So I'm gonna explain this and I'm gonna break it down a little bit more. All this line means, get all the files in the current directory that end with .mp4. That's all it means. It just means for every file in the current directory that ends with .mp4, we're gonna do the next stuff. All right, now what's the next stuff? All right, first of all, we need to understand what we wanna name our output file. So let's take our input file. Let's call it file1.mp4. So all this does is it copies file1.mp4 and puts it in the output directory called converted. That's all it does. It says the output file is gonna be in the converted directory. Super simple. It does not change the extension. We'll get to that later, but all this means is that our output file for now is going to be in the converted directory with the same name and same extension. And now here comes the command that you guys know from before. We're gonna call FFmpeg and we're gonna specify the input file to be this percent percent %f. What the heck is that? Okay, so now here we have percent percent %f as well. So what this means is we're gonna get all these files that end with .mp4 and percent percent %f is gonna be each of them individually. So let's say we had five files from a shoot, right? File 1.mp4, file 2.mp4, file 3.mp4, file 4.mp4, and file 5.mp4. What this means is percent percent %f is gonna be first file 1.mp4, then it's gonna be file 2.mp4, and so on and so forth. So that's just gonna change as we traverse the list of files that we have in the current directory. I know it's a little confusing guys, but bear with me. Then we're gonna specify our video codec again, our video profile again, then our audio codec again. And the last thing, this is a little bit complicated. It's not just output file. This is where we actually change the extension from MP4 to MOV. So what this means is if we have file1.mp4 and we run the script, it's gonna take file1.mp4 and do the conversion and then rename it to file1.mov. If you do something ridiculous like 123.mp4.mp4, that's on you. You guys gotta understand, that's a you problem, not a script problem. So don't be coming at me in the comment section, well, my file is called file.mp4.mp4 because I need it for this project. No, that's on you, not me. You, not me. 
Your fault, not mine. Now let's look back at the first line. What the heck does this mean? This is gonna be a little bit more in depth than what you need to know, but I'm gonna explain it for those of you guys who are curious. So if you guys can see over here in line number four, we're using percent sign, then the name of the variable holding our output directory. So we're gonna be using percent sign, percent sign, and then the name. So essentially this percent sign, percent sign name is gonna turn into the word converted. That's gonna be our output directory. So if you guys look at line 10, you guys can see we use exclamation points instead of percentages. So you guys are probably confused. Why the heck are we doing this? Well, if you guys look at line seven, that's where we set what our, we want our output file name to be. And again, remember guys, that's converted plus the file name, all right? So if it's file one, it's converted slash file one. So we're putting the file one in the subdirectory called converted. So since we set the variable on line seven and we want to use it on line eight, so we need to tell our batch script that we're using a variable we literally just set. And that's what this does. All right, I know that was a little bit more in depth than some of you guys expected. If you guys did get confused, feel free to rewind over the parts that you didn't understand and watch it a couple of times, because when I learned this stuff, it was a little bit hard. All right, with that being said, let's understand how we're actually gonna run this. So what we need to do is actually save this to a batch file. It doesn't matter what you call it. I called it convert to prores.bat. You could call it pizzapop.bat. The important thing is you need to remember what it does, and the extension has to be .bat because that'll tell Windows, hey, I wanna run this in the command line. So by just double clicking the script on my Windows machine, it'll pop up a command line and just run. And now I can go drink a cup of coffee. It, it does take a little bit of time, guys, so you guys will have to be patient. But at the end, in the converted directory, you guys will see that we have a file1.mov. All right, guys, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, once it's converted, you guys can open up the file in Resolve and you guys can edit it and do whatever you guys want with it. It's just that simple. Also, this is a batch script and batch script only runs on Windows. You cannot run this on Mac. So on Mac, you either have to type in the command, or if you guys want, I can make a follow-up video on how to write the shell script. Please comment down below because that's how I'll know you guys actually want it. But either way, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it educational and actually learned how to open up the file. I hope you guys also learned a thing or two about FFmpeg because it's more useful than what we're just using it for. However, we did solve the problem of actually opening up our video files so we don't have to purchase studio and we can be happy with the free version for as long as we need, you know? I'm not spending, I just bought a new camera. I'm not spending $300, $400 more on, on new software. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you guys found it educational and informative. Please, in the comment below, write and tell me what you guys think. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you guys are new to the video. I really do appreciate it. And I have a gaming channel, if you guys didn't know, called Kyle Unleashed. Links in the description below. I would really appreciate it if you guys could head on over and subscribe there as well. And the last thing I will say is we have an amazing Discord server with a bunch of wonderful individuals. So I highly recommend you guys join. Again, links in the description below. We're trying to grow and expand. And if you guys have any questions and want to get a hold of me right away, I do answer the comments pretty quickly. But I'm always active on that Discord server. So make sure you guys join. We have an amazing community. And that's it, guys. I hope it saved you some time and effort. And now you guys know how to convert your videos. Again, guys, don't forget to comment if you guys want that shell script. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.